From Hollywood, it's everyone's favorite game of strategy, knowledge, and fun. It's Tic Tac Doe. And now, here's your host, the star of Tic Tac Doe, Brandon Scrubs. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so very, very much. And hello, ladies and gentlemen. Do not adjust your TV sets. It has finally happened. Hell has frozen over, and I am back hosting Tic-Tac-Toe once again. I'm kidding. Hell has not frozen over yet. But it has been a long time coming. We are three, it's been close to three years, I think, since I did my last season of Tic-Tac-Toe. But we are back here, and we are going to do this game once again. And we have a new modified set courtesy of our buddy uh, Ryan. Uh, Ryan Morris, who who was a big uh, contributor to this year's Match Game Hollywood Squares Hour, he has revamped his old Tic Tac Doe software, and it's made enough fun changes to it to, that I wanted to present it and use it for our format for this season of Tic Tac Doe. So I'm glad to have uh, Ryan's support for this. And Ryan, if you're watching this, thank you so much for what you do. I appreciate the ever living hell out of you for it. And I'm just excited to be back hosting, still to this day, my favorite game show of all time. Although Sale of the Century has now become a very, very close second, just from what we've done here. But that's enough stalling for me at this point. You guys came here for a game show, so I say let's get to it and let's introduce our two contestants at our first game here on Tic Tac Doe. Our returning champion is a meat cutter from New Orleans, Louisiana. Please welcome... Jason Myers. And his opponent. He's a Hot Wheels and Funko Pop collector from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Meet Neil Sternitsky. <laughs> Gentlemen, welcome into Tic Tac Dill. Glad to have you both here. Let's start off with Jason back with us as my original champion who finished the season at end of season three as the champion and he's coming he's back here with us to start off this season jason welcome back here i was thinking this show got swept under the rug <laughs> i was getting cold outside <laughs> no it hadn't gotten swept under the rug there just there was a lot of other series and stuff i wanted to go through plus i wanted to make sure right. i gave love to the other barry and enright game shows of the of the big three of his era so but we came back, we've, we've shined up the studio, we, we kept everything warmed up, so we're back here, we're ready for some X and no fun. So, for the folks who don't know who you are by now, or maybe just tuning in for the first time to the channel, tell the folks at home about yourself, sir. I am from a small town located just outside of New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm a meat cutter by trade. When I'm not working, I enjoy video games. I enjoy watching game shows. I'm a on again, off again voice actor, and I think that about covers it. <laughs> Have you learned any new impressions since the last time we saw you here on Tic Tac Doe? Depends. How long do you want to keep this show on the air? <laughs> <laughs> um, I would like to not ruin it day one. Maybe day two. We'll see. <laughs> I'll just keep it at two words. Joe Pesci. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Enough said right there. Right. Well, glad to have you back, Jason. Good luck to you. And Neil, welcome back to Tic Tac Doe. Hey, Brandon. Great to be back here playing this old classic of ours. Yeah, I think between you and maybe one other, I think you you might be the OG who's been playing this with me or against me and some other uh some other game servers probably the longest of anyone right now and here. Yeah, so. this was a real throwback for me because when you first started your little MVG productions here, which ain't, ain't so little anymore. This was kind of where we where we started and in in the whole time i've been gone you by by what you just said you haven't really been hosting it so this is a real treat to be able to play this with you again yeah i was literally waiting for you to come back and it's like all right neil's back we can go back to doing this again <laughs> <laughs> no, 
No, I'm kidding. But I was saying, there, there, there's so many more game shows that I still yet to do. I have I could put a laundry list of them up on the screen, but I'm like that would take up too much time. So we're, we're just gonna skip ahead and say um, good luck to you. And uh, remind the actually before we go, remind the folks a little bit more about you. All right. Well, I'm from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, which if, if you need a little geography lesson is about roughly halfway between Green Bay and Milwaukee, about 30 miles inland from Lake Michigan. In fact, Fond du Lac is French for foot of the lake, which is at the foot of Lake Winnebago. Um, I'm a Hot Wheels collector, Funko Pop collector, which I kind of took on last last year. You can thank Alex Trebek for that. That's a, that's a story for another day. But I also enjoy other game shows. Favorite game of all time is Price is Right, as you all know. Well, some of you do. I got to meet Rachel Reynolds a number of years ago, my favorite model from the show. Also, also a hardcore, well, hardcore the, may not be the best word, but a loyal fan of Power Rangers, too. Hey, I'm still right there. The power still protects me all these years later, sir, so I'm with you there. Welcome back to the show, and let's get right into it. For those of you who have not seen this game, which is probably 95% of you out there, unless you've been with my channel since day one, here's how our game works. We're playing tic-tac-toe. Just like we have, first player to get three X's or three O's in a row, either across, up and down, or diagonally on our board, wins the game, and will win the cash in the pot, and goes on to our bonus round to take on my pet dragon, Fluffy, who I am not ready to go see after three years of him being left alone to do his own business. But... We will be visiting Fluffy a little bit later on, and along with some new features, which we'll talk about later on in uh, this episode as well. Uh, the first one being that uh, the categories are going to pop up on the screen. You pick a category. If you get it right, um, the outside boxes are now worth $250 a piece. And our center box is, of course, still a two-part question. Our players will get some extra time to try to solve that one. If they get it right, it's worth $500, okay? And... Mm. First player to get tic-tac-toe wins the game, all the cash in the pot, and heads on to the bonus round to take on Fluffy the Dragon for possibly $50,000 in cash. So, with that said, and all the formalities out of the way now, let's take a look at our nine subjects we're going to be using in our first game back here on Season 4 of Tic-Tac-Toe, and they are the following. We have general knowledge, secret category, music, literature, sports, double or nothing, television, jumping category, and finally, true or false. And all we'll talk about those red categories should they come up a little bit later on. They're special categories. And Jason, as our returning champion and our X player, you get the right to start first. Where are we going? Uh, let's start out with music. All right, starting with music there, top right-hand corner. Was it because you wanted the category, or was it because it was in your it was in your tree spot on the board? A little bit of both. All right, just checking. All right, <laughs> here is your here is your question under music, sir. In what U.S. state was blues musician Skip James born? Again, in what U.S. state was blues musician Skip James born? Is it A. Alabama, B. Mississippi, or C. Louisiana? I've never heard of Skip James down here, so I'm going to guess Mississippi. And I'm going to say you have a right answer, sir. Well done. You're on the board first. You got an X on the board, $250 in the pot, and let's chouffle. Let's hope this still works. Yep, still works. It ain't broken yet. <laughs> All right, Neil, over to you. All right, let's... Hmm. Let's go with TV. All right, go with television. Left side of the board here. Question under TV, sir. Who became the presenter of The Daily Show in 2015? Again, who became the presenter of The Daily Show in 2015? For the box, name him. Was it Stephen Colbert? No, I'm sorry. It was not Stephen Colbert. That was the year that uh, Trevor Noah took over as host of The Daily Show. Trevor wow. Noah is what we're looking for there. All right. So, uh, no, no box there. Still $250 in the pot as we shuffle once again. Jason, back to you. Oh, boy. 
Uh, let's get the cat out of the bag. True or false? All right, true or false in the center. All right, our true or false category is this. Uh, I will give you a true or false statement since it's in the center box here. You just have to answer if the correct answer is true or false for the first part, and I'll give you a follow-up question based on that question that you asked there in the true or false, okay? So, Andre Agassi has won more tennis Grand Slam tournaments than Rafael Nadal. That's the statement. Again, Andre Agassi has won more tennis Grand Slam tournaments than Rafael Nadal. That's the statement. Here's the follow-up question. What country is Andre Agassi from? Again, Andre. the statement again is Andre Agassi has won more tennis Grand Slam tournaments than Rafael Nadal. And the follow-up is what country is Andre Agassi from? Here's your extra time to think about it. All right, Jason, we'll start with the statement. Sir, Andre Agassi has won more tennis, um, won more tennis tournaments than Rafael Nadal. Is that true or false? I'm going to say true. No, I'm sorry. It's actually false. Mm. Yep, Andre Agassi has actually won eight Grand Slams to Rafael Nadal 16. Okay. So, yeah. Well, then. And, of course, the follow-up there, we ask you what country Andre Agassi is from. Of course, he's from the good old U.S. of A. So, all right. So, no box there. We remain with $250 in the pot, and we shuffle. And, Neil, we're back to you. Let's try TV again. All right. TV. Didn't work out for you the first time. Maybe you could do better on this one. Television question is this, Neil. Which TV show is Waylon Smithers associated with? Again, which uh, TV show is yeah. Waylon Smithers associated with? For the box, that, name it. That would be The Simpsons. And that would be a right answer, sir. Well done. There we go. We got an O on the board. We have $500 in the pot, and we shuffle. Jason, back to you. Okay, I know where I'm not going. All right, cool. Uh... Ah, uh, man. Sports. All right, going with the sports category up top middle there. Here comes a sports question for you, sir. What famous athlete said the following quote? It isn't the mountains ahead to climb that wear you out. It's the pebble in your shoe. Again, what famous athlete said, yes, it was known for saying, it isn't the mountains ahead to, to climb that wear you out. It's the pebble in your shoe. For the box, name him. I'm going to say Usain Bolt. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. It's not Usain Bolt there. No. Um, believe it or not, it's actually the great the great one himself, Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali well, then. One who said that. You know, he was, he was very famous for a lot of um, fun phrases there. But not the one we needed there. So we still have $500 in the pot, and we shuffle again. Neil, we're back to you. All right, let's try true or false. All right, true or false in bottom middle here. Looking for another true or false statement. Here it comes for you, Neil. The Cayman Islands is a British overseas territory in the Southern Pacific Ocean. Again, the Cayman Islands is a British overseas territory in the Southern Pacific Ocean. Is that statement true or false? That would be false. Yeah, it's actually in the Western Caribbean. You're right, sir. Well done. Put a no on the board. You have $750 in the pot now, and we shuffle. Jason, over to you. Oh, great. Jump in. Jump in category. All right. The jump in podiums have been activated here. I will read you a question, and the first player to buzz in and give me the correct answer wins the box. If you buzz in and you're incorrect, however, your opponent is going to get the box on this one. What are the seed-bearing parts of a pine, cedar, and fir trees called? Again, what are the seed-bearing parts of a pine, cedar, and fir trees called? Are they nuts, catkins, cones, or gourds? And that's Jason. Cones. Cones is the correct answer. You got the block.
Good job there, sir. That is an X on the board and a nice block for you. $1,000 in the pot, and we shall shuffle. <laughs> Neil, over to you. Well, let's say it's going to be TV for the block. All right, TV for the block in the center there. Again, a two-part question under television here. Of course, you're going to get some extra time to think about it. Neil, what, with which cartoon are Philip J. Fry and Leela Tulunga associated with? Again, which, with, which cartoon are Philip J. Fry and Leela Tulunga associated with? It? That's the first one. The second part of that question is, who was the creator of that cartoon? Again, which cartoon are Philip J. Fry and Leela Tulunga associated with? And follow up, who was the creator of that cartoon? Here's your extra time to think about it. <laughs> All right, Neil. Uh, first part of the question is: With which cartoon are Philip J. Fry and Leela Tulunga associated with? Uh, I'm going to guess Dexter's Laboratory. No, I'm sorry, it's not Dexter's Laboratory. Anybody in the audience know? Futurama. Is it Futurama? It is Futurama. Futurama oh. is the correct answer. And the follow-up to that, the creator of Futurama, of course, is Matt Groening. Or Groening. Okay. Same, the same guy yeah. who's behind The Simpsons. So, um, I believe he's behind The Simpsons. Yeah, that's right. All right, so $1,000 in the pot. No, no capture as of yet. We're going to pause for the cause and take a quick more break. And we'll be back to see what we with Tic Tac Go right after this. Stay with us. Welcome back to Tic Tac Doe. Here, a good game between our two players so far. Two X's, two O's on the board. We have $1,000 in the pot, and we are going to shuffle. And Jason, we're over to you. Okay. Sports. All right, sports in the center. Again, if you get this question correct, that'll be Tic Tac Doe, $1,500, and you're going to get a chance to go on, take on Fluffy in the bonus round. Jason, how long in seconds is the shot clock in an NBA game? And how long in seconds is the shot clock in the NBA game? And the second part of the question is, what does the what does NBA stand for? Again, how long are the seconds of the shot clock in the NBA game? And second part is how what does NBA stand for? Here's your extra time to think about it. <laughs> All right, Jason. Um, how long is the sec and how long in seconds is the shot clock in an NBA game? Twenty-four seconds. Twenty-four seconds is correct. And for Tic Tac Doe and fifteen hundred dollars, what does NBA stand for? National Basketball Association. And Jason, I've waited three long years to say this. <laughs> you have Tic Tac Doe. Good game. <laughs> Good game, Jason. Good game. Well done by both of you there. And, Jason, you picked up the win there. $1,500 gets you started off right on this season. And we, we'll, you'll we'll see you in the bonus round in just a minute. Neil, played a valiant effort, sir. Did you have fun with us? I always do, Brandon. Well, you're not going to leave here. You're not going to leave here empty-handed here. We're going to give you $100 for each O you had on the board there. So that's another $200. And that'll start off your season total here with us, all right? Fantastic. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for playing. And give it up for Neil Sterniski, ladies and gentlemen. And Jason, I bet you're ready to finally go take on our old friend Fluffy in the bonus round, aren't you? I'm, just, I'm sure he's happy to see me. <laughs> I can imagine so. Let's see how you, <laughs> let's see how you do. You take on Fluffy in our bonus round. Come on over. All right, Jason, a, a long forgotten but very familiar spot for you over here in Bodus Land. Welcome to it. And you know what you got to do. You got nine numbers up on the board this year. 
And um, your objective, of course, is to get to $1,000 without seeing Fluffy or find the chicken attack and you're a winner. There he is. And now, if you yeah. can, if you can Still get to happy, yeah, yeah, I can imagine so. But yeah, uh, if you can get to a thousand dollars or find the tick in the tech, you are a winner, and you're gonna walk away with fifty thousand dollars in cash. Nice. Now, now, of course, if you find tick and tech, you automatically get the dough. However, and this is this is one of the other new wrinkles this season as well. We did it in the past for a running jackpot this season. It's just straight up big money. If you find Tick and Tack on your first two picks, you're gonna walk out of here with one hundred thousand dollars. Okay. <laughs> no pressure. Some people say we weren't playing for big enough prizes in the bonus round. I'm like, hopefully this will keep the good folks at home satisfied here. All right. So of course, a hundred thousand dollars on the line. But of course, if you run into Fluffy at any point in time. That's going to be game, and he takes away everything you got in the bonus round, but you get to keep the $1,500 you had in the upfront. All right? Got it. All right, so if you're ready, Fluffy's ready to go hide and possibly ruin your day. Fluffy, <laughs> anything, any kind words from you? <sighs> and he is angry, but he's ready to go. So, Fluffy, go hide, and I don't want to see you again. All right, Jason, off you go, sir. Nine numbers up there. You can get some help from the audience or pick them all yourself. It's up to you. Let's see if the code works. Three. All right, starting in his beloved money tree. Let's see what we got. Behind three, what do we have? There's a tick. Ooh. Find me Boy. a tick, sir, and it's worth $100,000. One? For a hundred grand, that wouldn't that be something to kick off this new season? Hundred thousand <laughs> on the first bonus round play. Number one, if what that th happens, uh, I swear to anybody that's watching, I do not know where everything's at. <laughs> yes, because I don't even know where everything's at at this point. But let's see if it's back there. Tack behind one. No, it's one hundred fifty dollars. Oh. But all right, but you have some money now, and now a decision to be made. Take the 150 and stop or risk it and go on. What do you want to do? Got to go for it. Okay. Find me tech. It's worth $50,000. All right. Now to complete the code, six. Six. Let's see if it's there. Behind six, what do we have? $300 more. All right. Hmm. It's 450 now. You need 550 more or tech. What do you want to do? I'll keep going. Okay. Uh, since this is your favorite number, let's see if it works out for my favorite too. Seven. Number seven. It's where I like to start when I play this bonus game. Although recently has not done me very done me any justice. So let's see if it worked for Jason. Behind seven. What do we have? This attack yes. is the winner. There we go. Congratulations. That is what we like to see out the box. $50,000 for you, Woo! Jason. Well done. And when we add that to your previous winnings, sir, it gives you a grand total of $51,500. Nice. What a great way to start off the season here. And you know what? I'm going to give somebody else a chance here real quick. Ooh real quick to see if they can um, pick up some bonus cash. Neil, since you didn't um, weren't able to beat Jason here, I'll give you a chance right now. I will give you $5,000 if you could tell me where Fluffy's hiding behind. Got um, let's go with number four. Number four. He thinks Fluffy's back there. Let's see if he is. Is Fluffy behind four? No, dead oh. center. You lazy bum. Still. <laughs> all, all new set. Everything's changed. Still lazy ass dragon. I would have picked that. I was going to pick five too. If I, if I, if... Cause he's known for not moving. He's a lazy ass dragon. 
That is. Is. But hey, congratulations though, Jason. Fifty-one thousand five hundred dollars is yours, and you get to play another game of Tic Tac Toe, and we will have that game for you right after this short commercial break. Back to more Tic Tac Toe right after this. Welcome back to Tic Tac Dell here, Jason. So far, one game in already over $51,000 in cash, and he's ready to meet his next opponent, so let's meet him now. Our next contestant is a truck driver from Cincinnati, Ohio. Please welcome in Kevin Henry. Kevin, welcome to the show. Hello, Brandon. How are you? I'm doing well. It's been a while since you've had a chance to play a tic-tac-toe here up on the stage here. But remind the good well, folks a little bit about yourself. Sure I can. For those of you who are new to the server only, the rest of you should know who I am. I'm Kevin. I am 38 years old. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. I run WKPH Cincinnati. I host Gold Rush on MVG Productions. And I am a Packers fan, Uber driver, ordained minister, truck driver, and... Uh, Dirt track announcer. Almost forgot about that. I'm, I'm going to lose my job for that. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure if you can lose your job before you start it, sir. I, I, don't, I don't think that's possible. True. But, I guess I'm still getting my feet wet there. Yes, but are you, excited to pl are you excited to play the game with us here today? You, me, and Jason? What better uh, trio is there? Um, Larry, Curly, and Moe of the Three Stooges are pretty funny. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> But they're not playing right now, we are. Yes, that you are. And let's take a look at those categories that you will be playing with in this game of Tic-Tac-Toe. They are the following. We have pop culture, a secret category, food and drink, science and geography, politics and current affairs, showdown, films, auction, and finally, true or false. And again, we'll talk about the red categories when and should they come up. And now I will ask Jason as our champion to make the first selection in this game. Food and drink. All right, food and drink. Starting in his beloved tree because he feels safe and comfortable up there. <laughs> All right. That's not going to get old quick. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'll, I'll, I've, had all the, I've had all the fun with it by the end of the next episode, right. probably. And I'll be like, all right, moving on. Here's your question under food and drink, sir. Hanger, on, onglet, and flat iron are examples of what? Again, hanger, onglet, and flat iron are examples of what? I would be fired if I got this question wrong. They're all stakes. They are stakes, and you are right, sir. Well done. We have an X on the board just like that, $250, and we shuffle. And we're over to Kevin for your first selection. All right, food and drink. All right, food and drink, bottom middle. More food and drink questions for you. This one, we'll try with this, sir. All what, right. what are udon? That's U D O N. What are udon? For the box, name it. Noodles. They are noodles. You're right. Put an O on the board. Just like that. $500 in the pot as we shuffle. Jason, back to you. I'm still hungry. Food and drink. <laughs> All right. Food and drink once again. Third time in that category. Here's your question What herb is pesto traditionally made with? Again, what herb is pesto traditionally made with? For the box, name it. I want to say it's basil. And I want to say you're right. There we go. Another X on the board. $750 in the pot as we shuffle. Kevin, back to you. Uh, I got to go pop culture for the block. All right. Need this for a vertical block of Kevin here. Under pop culture, here is your question. Kevin, the 1990 hit song Ice Ice Baby by Vanilla Ice sampled a duet between Queen and which late singer? Again, the 1990 hit song Ice Ice Baby by Vanilla Ice sampled a duet between Queen and which late singer? For the block, name him. Ooh. I think my stay is going to be a short one. I got to pass. I don't know. No one guess there? Nope. Ah. Audience? David Bowie. David Bowie. Yes, David Bowie. Uh, from their famous song, Under Pressure, which unfortunately Kevin's now under with $750 in the pot as we shuffle. 
Jason, over to you. Science and geography. All right. Get this question correct. Under science and geography, there's tic-tac-toe. A thousand dollars for you, and you're off to bonus land once again. Under the category of science and geography, here's your question. The Latin word ferrum, that's F-E-R-R-U-M, gives its name to the chemical symbol for which metal? Again, the Latin word ferrum gives its name to the chemical symbol for which metal? For tic-tac-toe and a thousand dollars, name it. Iron. You have tic-tac-toe! Good game, Kevin. You as well. Now, Jason not losing any form from being out for three years. Back to back with good questions there. Wins a game is going back to the boss round again in just a minute. Kevin, fortunately, I wish your stay worked out longer, man. Well, I still work for you, so I guess I'll just go back to hosting. I'm probably more comfortable there. Well, it's all right. Hopefully you had a good time with us for the short stay here. You did get an O on the board, so we're going to give you $100 for that, and that'll go hopefully get you started, and we'll definitely have you back later on this season, all right? I, I look forward to it. All right, give it up for Kevin Henry, y'all. Thank you. Guys. And Jason, for you, that's another $1,000 added to what you've won, sir. You're now up to $52,500. Would you like to crack six figures this season already, just one <laughs> episode in? Sure, if standards and practices doesn't come after me after the episode's done. I don't think they will. Under the new format, I think you're fine. But let's see what kind of damage you really can do as you take on Fluffy in the bonus round. Come on over. Jason, welcome back, sir. Another chance for you to take down Fluffy here and possibly win yourself fifty thousand dollars. Uh, Fluffy's kind of angry for you took his money to begin with, but let's see if you can swipe it again. But this time, I want you to win the hundred thousand if you can do it. That'd be great. All right, so let's see what how well you do. Let's shuffle up the board, Fluffy. Go hide somewhere. And I saw like three fluffies at the end there. I'm like, uh oh. He might have actually moved this time, so I don't know. But again, choice is yours. You get some help from the audience if you want. But start picking and good luck. Let's try to code again. Tree. Starting with his beloved tree. What do we have behind three? $150. All right, take the money and run. I'll go on for another pick. And going on. Okay. Uh, number one. Top of the charts. Number one. Looking for some more money. Behind one. 500 more. At 650, you need about 350. Don't find that Loch Ness Monster. He will take it from you. <laughs> Please, no. Uh, going on. Complete the code. Six. All right. Come on. Another win here. Let's see. 350 or better. Behind six. What do we have? 250. All right. $900. So Oof. potentially could be your last pick as long as you don't find ticker tech. Uh, or, you could t or you could take 900 now and stop. I came this far. Might as well go all the way. All right. Going on. Four. Number four. Left side of the board for big money. Behind four, what do we have? 100. You're a winner. You got it. All on the dot. Nice. Very nice, sir. That is another fifty thousand dollars added to what you added added to the fifty-two thousand five hundred dollars you had previously. Gives you a grand total now of one hundred two thousand five hundred dollars. Whew! A nice win for you. And now, um, Kevin, before you run off here as well, I'm going to give you a chance for to pick up another $5,000. If you can tell me of the five remaining numbers there, where is Fluffy hiding? Let's try two. Little Deuce. Hopefully he's there for $5,000. Do we have a dragon? We do. We got a winner. Right. Hey, I'll take it. There we go. That's $5,000 for you, sir. That gives you, you. $5,100 on the day. A little bit better than the 100 bucks you had there. Well, I'm, I'm ahead of Neil, and I'm in second place. Woo! 
<laughs> yeah, it's a good day. Well, we're also going to give another chance for one of our audience members who have been watching the show and so patient. We're going to give them a chance to see if they can win some money in our new Dragon Finder game. And we'll do that right after the break here on Tic Tac Toe. Stay with us. Ooh. And welcome back here to Tic Tac Toe. Uh, just the, almost out of time for today's episode, but before we go, we'll give our audience members a chance to see how well they can do, and our new on our new audience dragon finder. So let me get two contestants, Cedric Weatherspoon and Jose Cazares. It's your chance to find Fluffy. All right, gentlemen, welcome to our new Dragon Fighter bonus game. Here's how this here's how this game works. Between the two of you, you're gonna go back and forth trying to find my pet dragon Fluffy in the center there. Every box that you pick has a cash amount in it: five hundred, one thousand, or fifteen hundred. We're gonna take that away from your prize pool. It's ten thousand dollars to start, and for every time you can't find Fluffy, we deduct that amount from the Pot. If you guys go through, find all eight cash amounts, and nobody finds Fluffy, no one wins anything. But the first one of you to find him will win the cash that's remaining in the pot. So, with that said, Cedric and Jose, are you ready? Yeah, let's go. All let's right. do this. All right, Fluffy, go hide somewhere. We're coming to find you. Like Antoine Dotson said, we gonna find you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, they are hiding somewhere, and like I said, this this uh, the cash earned in our audience game is not for will not add toward their season totals. This is strictly for their MVG bank accounts, cash paid right now. So, Cedric, we uh, the randomizer picked you first. So for ten thousand dollars, where is Fluffy hiding? That unlucky number eight be the one. Watch, wait for it. And the dragon's cave for ten thousand dollars. Fluffy, are you home? Wait for it. No. Oh. Okay, okay. At least I know right. I don't know find it on the Jose, first day. Jose, <laughs> ninety five hundred dollars if you could find Fluffy. Uh would he really be a li the lazy ass dragon he is? I'm gonna go with number five in the center. Center I'll box, sure. number five. Come on, let's find a dragon. Fluffy, you there? No. Ah. All right, eighty-five hundred dollars uh, up for grabs, Cedric. Number three. Number three. Is he behind three? I'll take a chance. He's probably not there. Found him. He's yeah. the winner. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well done, Cedric. Uh, Congratulations. Uh, fitting, it was the fitting tree that was there. Eighty-five hundred dollars for you, and there's the rest of the board there. Congratulations, Cedric. That'll hit your MVG bank account here in just a little bit. And, yep. folks, that is it. That is the return of Tic Tac Doe, three years in the making. And, again, big shout-out to uh, Mr. Ryan Morris for setting us up with the new uh, with the new set, the new sounds, everything here to bring a new Tic Tac Doe experience to you guys at home. But we thank you all for watching. If you want more Tic Tac Doe action and you want to see how I did this show almost five years ago, Go back and check out the very first season. It, it's come a long way since then. Or check out one of the other two seasons as well of Tic Tac No Action here on the channel. And if you want to subscribe to see other great game show games like this of the past, present, or future, click that subscribe button down below and ring the bell. That way you never miss out on all the fun and games going down here at MVG Productions. And until the war of X's and O's is waged once again, I'm your host, Brandon Scruggs, saying thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here for more Tic Tac Doe. So long, everyone. Some of our party contestants will receive Bissell's Double Action Floor Sweeper. It snaps up dirt and litter off of carpets and bare floors, great for quick pickups between vacuuming, furnished by Bissell. 20 Mule Team Borax. Natural for cleaning and freshening all the family wash. 20 Mule Team Borax. The Vitamix 3600, a stainless steel 3 minute bread maker and home yogurt factory. 
The juice is without waste, cooks without burning, freezes instant ice cream, and offers 800 great recipes. The Vitamix 3600. A supply of lollipop dog biscuits. The pet treats dogs and cats love. Feed your dog lollipops. From Gallery Home, the book of home improvement. Gallery of Home Book. The song or buying a home, you'll find that they do their homework from Gallery of Home. A five pound rat honey glazed ham. Looks as good on the outside as it tastes on the inside from rat. And one lucky member of our studio audience will receive a gift certificate for the purchase of any item listed in the world famous Spiegel catalog. Spiegel with over 50,000 quality items offering value, selection, and savings. Spiegel Chicago 60609. This is your announcer, Michael Gentry, speaking for Tic Tac Bill. A bearing in right presentation and association with MVP Productions. 